Uniform may make the man, but it does not make men uniform. As we all know, there are variations in the human makeup. One of the most important of these is in the blood. For a patient undergoing a blood transfusion, identifying and then using the right variety of blood may make the difference between life and death. If blood mixed with an anticoagulant is left to stand, it separates into two parts. The red cells settle at the bottom, leaving above them the fluid part called plasma. Without an anticoagulant, the blood clots, and the fluid which separates is now called serum. In the case of a transfusion, if the red cells from one person are mixed with a serum from another person, the results can indicate either safety or danger for the patient. In a correctly matched mixture, the red cells of the recipient will stay apart, the result we wish to achieve. In an incorrectly matched mixture, the red cells may agglutinate, that is, clump together, or they may be entirely lysed, that is, dissolved. Both these reactions indicate danger to the patient. Before 1900, a blood transfusion was a hit or miss operation. Often the patient reacted unfavorably to the transfusion, sometimes with fatal results. The Viennese scientist Landsteiner was the first to devise tests which divided human blood into four groups. These groups are called Group O, today distinguished by a blue label, Group A with a yellow label, Group B with a pink label, and Group AB with a white label. Landsteiner recognized that the dangerous reactions to a transfusion were caused by chemical substances called antibodies in the blood plasma or serum reacting against antigens, different chemical substances carried on the surfaces of the red cells. We can show this in a diagram, but in fact, antigens and antibodies are far too small to be visible under the microscope. If transfused blood is not correctly matched, the antibodies in the patient's serum, anti-A, anti-B, or both, will react against antigens of the same letter carried on the donor's red cells. Group O red cells do not carry A or B antigens, and thus are not affected by anti-A or anti-B antibodies. Group A red cells are agglutinated by anti-A antibodies, Group B by anti-B antibodies, and Group AB are agglutinated by both anti-A and anti-B. Where do the antibodies come from? Landsteiner discovered that they occur in the sera of people. Thus, group O serum contains both anti-A and anti-B. Group A serum contains only anti-B. Group B serum contains only anti-A. Whilst group AB contains neither. But if we investigate red cells more closely, we find that besides A and B antigens, their surfaces carry a whole series of other antigens varying in different people. To take a theoretical example, if red cells carrying an antigen, let's call it X, are transfused into a patient whose red cells lack this antigen X, the patient may develop antibodies against the X intruder. A later transfusion of blood carrying antigen X will be attacked by these antibodies and may cause a severe and possibly fatal reaction.